We're here in one of our trials looking at cover crops for weed suppression. Cover crops have been commonly used in this region as part of water management and water quality. Uh, they're planted in the fall after corn or, or vegetables to help take up excess phosphorus and uh, nitrogen uh, before it has a chance to move off the fields and into our waterways. It's a way of protecting our, our surface waters and ultimately the Chesapeake Bay and inland bays. But cover crops have a lot of functions, not just for water quality. And um, I, in, in a wet spring, cover crops can help by drying out the soil, wicking up that moisture and, and evaporating so it dries out uh, uh, sooner in, uh, after rains. And during a dry summer spell, they can help conserve moisture by helping reduce evaporation. One of the other benefits of cover crops is weed suppression. We have a number of trials looking at cover crops uh, for weed management. Uh, some of these are funded by the Delaware Soybean Board, and some of them are done in collaboration with the U.S. Department of Agriculture and uh, colleagues up at Penn State. What we're finding with cover crops is that they reduce the number of weed seedlings, and it slows the growth of weed seed seedlings. So when we come back with another management tactic, whether that's cultivation or a chemical spray, they tend to be more effective because the weeds that we're controlling are more susceptible to whatever that tactic might be. This particular trial, we're focusing on letting the cover crops grow longer into the spring before we kill them and plant our soybeans. So rather than, than killing the cover crop when it's 20, 24 inches tall, we're letting it get three to four feet tall there's a lot more biomass there. There's a lot more stems and um, uh, uh, tissue of the, of the rye, in this case the rye cover crop, to suppress weeds for longer into the season. And we're finding it to be fairly effective, particularly when used in combination with a properly timed herbicide application.